Welcome back to Forecast News with Millie and Afshin, where we give you the lowdown on what events and anniversaries are coming up around the world this week. Please subscribe if you're not already and let us know in the comments what you think of the events that we talk about. This is the, the final show for a few weeks, isn't it, Afshin? So the season finale. Uh, Maybe we're for away. you. Oh, aren't you, aren't you away as well this time? You know, uh, it, it never stops, does it? Things never stop. The stories the, never stop. You know uh, what we forgot to do, Millie? We got to uh, two things, actually. Oh. Um, first of all, why is it the number of people watching Forecast News goes up on Sunday night and Monday morning when the week has already been forecast by us? Is it because people are checking on whether our forecasts were correct? I think so. I think we're being tested. We're being marked clearly on our accuracy. And great comments on this week's show. Uh, Millie, we should really read these comments out. Maybe when we come back after the when you come back after the summer, we'll read out some of the comments. Uh, people debating, people saying I'm misogynist, uh, that I talk over you. Lovely comments. Well, perhaps we, we can highlight some. Of, of course, people people don't know we Ashton and I have known each other for a very long time, so uh, there's never any hard feelings. Ashton, it's okay to be misogynist <laughs> if you know the person. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, no, it's 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 all fine. It's it's all good. We uh... that didn't even that sounds really defensive. <laughs> uh, before we even get on to Monday, I've got to say that the Chilean president is here in Dubai in the UAE. Gabriel Boric celebrating economic ties between the United Arab Emirates and the left-wing uh, run Chilean government, which now, of course, uh, supports the memory of Salvador Allende overthrown by. Uh, Kissinger, the CIA, and the uh, uh, economists that would build up Margaret Thatcher in the 70s. In okay, so you'll be meeting him then, I presume, this week? No, not really. Oh. Oh, Go wow. for Monday then. Okay, Monday 29th of July. Let's begin then. Uh, well, first up, I've got uh, Japan, which is hosting the Quad Foreign Ministers. Sounds like a cool club, doesn't it? They kind of sound like a gang of superheroes, the, the quad foreign ministers. Uh, but if you're wondering on who they are, that's Japan, uh, India, Australia, and the US, of course. Uh, they're going to be, uh, including, I'll, I'll say, Anthony Blinken uh, of the US, infamous Anthony Blinken, uh, who, who's actually on a bit of an Asia trip at the moment, isn't he? I think he's either been to or is going to visit Vietnam, Laos, Japan, the Philippines, Singapore, and Mongolia. Uh, but what do you think this quad gang are going to talk about? I think the reproach of China is very much on the agenda. I think they're actually going to issue a statement later today uh, calling for a free and open Pacific, whatever that even means. What does that mean? Yeah, obviously, this is the U.S. war on China. Uh, it sees China as an existential uh, risk to U.S. hegemony, the uh, decades of U.S.-run uh, empire and violence all around the world. So uh, I don't know how Blinken got the time to uh, immediately comment on the victory of Nicolas Maduro, the former bus driver, to a third term in the Venezuelan elections uh, in the country with the largest known oil reserves on the planet. But he's in Hanoi, uh, as in Vietnam. Mm. Uh, on uh, Monday. So how did he have time to already be backing Elon Musk and saying uh, the government of Venezuela must be overthrown, even though there were 900 election observers, international observers there? Britain, of course, and Western European countries still seemingly recognize a uh, terrorist. Juan Guaido in Florida is the president. Uh, but anyway, we'll have to see whether they try and overthrow the newly elected government uh, this week. Uh, this quad, of course, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what India is doing there. Uh, Jai Shankar having to play a very, uh, very tricky game, arguably, because if he's speaking to uh, Japanese Foreign Minister Kamikawa, uh, a kind of slave of the United States, of course, uh, big demonstration still in Okinawa against the U.S. bases there, against rapes of Japanese women there. Uh, but... You know, Lloyd Austin, the Pentagon guy, was talking about the placement of missiles and uh, so many, so much military expansion there to try and uh, catalyze war with China. China's not going to have one, I don't think. No, uh, well, uh, a lot of rising tensions uh, with China we'll, we'll see throughout the week. Uh, but also, while, while Blinken is in Asia, then Joe Biden 
Uh, it's meant to be visiting Texas, finally, to again mark the 1964 Civil Rights Act anniversary. Who's, who's Joe Biden, sorry? <laughs> Joe Biden's st- still the uh, President of the United States, at least uh, while we're recording this show. Who knows what's, what could happen in the next few hours. But he's what? finally visiting Texas, although that this anniversary has been going on for about six months now, I swear. I think we've mentioned it every week. Uh, but he was, in fairness, meant to go to Texas a couple of weeks ago and didn't, apparently because of Trump's assassination attempt. But it could also be the fact that he's... Uh, was almost overthrown and now obviously not even running uh, in the race that hasn't yet resigned as president. Uh, But he's going to be going to the LBG Presidential Library. And it's reported that he's going to announce a reform to the U.S. Supreme Court whilst he's there, which I think includes uh, endorsing term limits for the justices, an ethics code and a constitutional amendment limiting presidential immunity. Why is he doing that, though, when he's on the way out? Surely this... This isn't going to help him. Is he trying to it's just a, stop Trump by doing this? I don't know. It's a case country, isn't it? And still Biden administration officials had time to wrongly say that it was a uh, uh, Lebanese resistance missile that killed Syrians in the occupied Golan Heights when, of course, uh, most around the world and in the global south believe it to be the uh, absurd Iron Dome Raytheon system that failed and killed so many children playing football uh, in the occupied Golan Heights. I've been there on the border there. Uh, Biden administration officials saying Israel should attack Lebanon or trying to say they shouldn't attack Lebanon. We don't know what the American position is, but uh, no one is in control except maybe Blinken and Sullivan in uh, Washington. So Biden in Texas, what is the point of that person? And he's clearly hated uh, because Biden himself said he's not good enough to run for the presidency. So he's hated by the American public. What right does he have to wander around talking about the uh, Civil Rights Act when he is infamous for his uh, support for the mass incarceration of African Americans uh, with legislation he supported? So uh, what a failure of a presidency. You well, know, hey, we still don't know if he's going to last his full term. I mean, I'm sure that won't be the reason, but we certainly don't know. If he's going to resign, uh, you were going to say? It was, it's the anniversary of the wedding of uh, the Princess of Wales, Lady Diana Spencer, the old Princess of Wales, who wanted the banning of cluster bombs and mines, which are now being exported by Britain to the Ukrainian government today. And uh, Prince of Wales, Charles, is now a king in Britain. And uh, you never hear him say a thing about his ex-wife's campaigns on landmines and cluster bombs. Uh, it was a lot of people that watched that wedding. You weren't alive, were you, Millie? Nor was I. Seven hundred fifty million. <laughs> okay. Well, well, on on weapons and, and tech. Uh, are you going to be going to the SIGGRAPH twenty twenty four convention? I, I know you're into your technology. Uh, this is the, the the premier conference and exhibition on computer graphics and interactive techniques. It's held in Denver, in Colorado. It's the 51st uh, conference of its kind. Meta's Mark Zuckerberg and uh, NVIDIA's Jens, uh, Jensen Huang are going to be speaking there. NVIDIA, by the way, is an AI company, uh, American-based, and they're both going to be talking about breakthroughs in AI, so that's very fitting. Uh, though I think there are over a 100 very generous companies which the SIGGRAPH website says have provided help through full conference supporter registrations and other forms of support, I assume financial. Uh, They include, but are not limited to, BAA systems, BAE systems rather, Apple, Meta, Google, Nickelodeon, Walt Disney Animation Studios, Stanford University, Pixar, Nike, and many others. Are you going to this tech convention? You said NVIDIA, which is a great uh, share pick among most Wall Street analysts because it's going to dominate AI, is American. But it used the uses the ARM chip, which was has its roots in Britain, but Britain privatized it and lost all of its uh, technological development uh, that was happening um, uh, as regards uh, future technology. You mentioned BAE Systems. It was their bombs, of course, that are apparently meta and some of these other social media firms I mean that on forecast news, I can't use certain words. So uh, what do I say that BAE Systems does in Gaza? And uh, in Ukraine, with the those wearing the N patches on their um, on their sleeves, 
What do they say, Emily? What's the well, word? People can, can read between the lines there. Maybe look at some past episodes and and see. I, I think we, we get the picture. But I have to say, it is a very tech-heavy day because, meanwhile, Trump's new vice president, uh, J.D. Vance, he's at the Palo Alto fundraiser, uh, Palo Alto, which is a cybersecurity company in Silicon Valley, although its second biggest research and development center is in where? Tel Aviv, of course. And there are also dozens and dozens of jobs uh, they're hiring for in Tel Aviv. If you head on over to their website, jobs.paloaltonetworks.com, uh, we are not sponsored. But if you head on over there, you might be able to get a job. I hear it's a really good place to be right now, Tel Aviv. I'm not sponsored. Are you sponsored? I'm not sponsored. Uh, Tel Aviv obviously has been threatened with utter destruction by the Lebanese resistance uh, groups that say that uh, should uh, the British, European Union, uh, US-backed Israeli government choose to violate uh, Beirut, uh, Tel Aviv will be completely uh, destroyed. There was some piece about this, which, I mean, it's through the week, all this AI stuff, isn't it? Yeah. What's this? Uh, AI breakthrough creates brains for robots. As you say, the close linkages to the defense sector, uh, the wars in Gaza. I don't know why defense arms jobs haven't gone, arms shares have not gone up higher as these wars have been uh, doubled down on by NATO governments, outlawing negotiations, maybe because they were expecting so much more killing to, to happen. But I know we have to go to Tuesday, don't we? Yeah, although they have gone up, I, I will say many of these these arms companies oh. are doing very well, albeit doing maybe not as well as you. Really well expected. done, well done for you. I noticed yeah, the man. shares, I noticed Bitcoin went down as Trump talked about Bitcoin, but certainly Trump, J.D. Vance, very clearly saying and signaling they will bomb Iran, create war uh, on behalf of Israel. Of course, Miriam Adelson is the uh, financier for Donald Trump and J.D. Vance. So, uh, you know, if anyone thinks that Blinken, the Zionist, uh, is uh, alone in his support for the G in Gaza, and I don't mean the cap first letter of Gaza, uh, the G as as uh, deduced by the International uh, Court of Justice, plausibly, uh, you haven't seen nothing yet when Trump wins in November. Yeah, well, of course, we don't yet know what Trump will do, nor is, is Vice President Vance. We, we have a, a rough idea, but we don't know for sure. But Tuesday then, Tuesday, 30th of July, please do subscribe. Uh, on Tuesday, the Trump assassination attempt investigation uh, continues. The Committee on Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs and the Judicial Committee are holding a joint hearing to look at the security failures on that day. Now, acting director of the U.S. Secret Service, Ronald Lowe, uh, will be there along with FBI Deputy Director Paul Abate. Now, we know U.S. Uh, Secret Service uh, Director Kimberly Cheetle resigned last week, who we were talking about. Maybe that's why. Uh, she did acknowledge uh, that the Secret Service failed, uh, which is a, a scary admission, I think, from the Secret Service. I think there are actually currently 36 people who are being protected by the Secret Service as it stands right now. Uh, perhaps, though, though, they should be hiring some extra security just in case, wouldn't you say? Protect Cheetle, because she's so hated in the United States for her arrogant performance testifying in Congress. Well, to protect the people who are apparently being protected by the Secret Service, all 36 of them, I'd uh, say they should be a little bit worried. Um I'd, I'd say, but then again, they're backed so to the you know four by these uh, big multinational companies. Maybe, maybe it's uh, fine. I know you want to go on to other things, but I've got to say it's a big earnings day on uh, Tuesday, the mm. July the thirtieth. Pfizer and Merck, Pfizer back. These, I mean, all these companies are essentially welfare queen companies. They're uh, financed by governments. They're not really profitable without uh, government subsidies. So Pfizer and Merck. I think there's a bit of Pfizer in me. I don't know whether there's Pfizer in you, Millie. Probably. Uh, certainly, certainly I, uh, my heart isn't as good as it used to be because I took the vaccine. No, I'm just joking. If my heart's better, better, I think. So. Uh, your heart's better because of the vaccine. <laughs> yeah. And you're not getting Pfizer uh, share uh, inducements for that. BP, uh, which, of course, uh, was involved in the overthrow of the uh, government 
in Iran. Starbucks suffering hugely from the boycott over Gaza and the war. I think the statements from the um, founder of Starbucks, Howard Schultz, I met him once. Mm-hmm. Diageo, company I've always been fond of, even, you know, I've, I've always been fond of it. No, they're a drinks manufacturing company. They all All those drinks that you see in bars under different names are meant to make you think they're individual different companies making these drinks. It's just one company. They make them all of it. Mondelez, do they own Cadbury, Kraft or something? Procter & Gamble, L'Oreal, so much stuff. Prada Group, which is in Hong Kong for some reason. Why, why are all these companies doing it on the same day that the uh, flash estimate for European Union GDP is out showing deep trouble ahead for the Western European continent after its support for uh, Zelensky? What is this, though, results that are coming out on Tuesday in relation to all these companies? Yeah, those are uh, results coming out for their uh, second quarter, is it? Third quarter? Basically, it's the day that they will be publishing results. We're not telling you to invest in these companies, clearly. But if you do have shares, you better look at the results and, and see what they're saying. Buy the rumor, sell the news, as they say, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, and perhaps, perhaps some of those companies may be, may be funding uh, the Democrat Party, who knows, but they might be looking out for the deadline on Tuesday. Uh, the Democrat Party's presidential nomination uh, candidates have to submit documents on Tuesday uh, showing that they've met the necessary qualifications to be candidate. Of course, at the minute, the only candidate is Kamala Harris. Uh, clearly no one brave enough to go up against her. Uh, we had suspected, though, in previous episodes that this Gavin Newsom could be a contender. I don't know what, what happened to him, I think uh, maybe he's safer to accept Harris's uh, offer for a cabinet position instead, maybe. But clearly, you know, no one's going against her and she's could very well be the next president of the they, Playing the long game, maybe the yeah, governor yeah. of California. But uh, Kamala Harris in Georgia on uh, Tuesday. And if you notice how she tries to imitate the um, uh, inflections of uh, American Southern state, uh, African Americans. And in Georgia, I think in the Atlanta area, she's expected to be speaking. They're very uh, wary about the um, uh, security operation there. And no doubt she'll be trying to channel Martin Luther King Jr. in Georgia. Kamala Harris was attorney general in California, responsible, so her uh, accusers say, of executing African Americans in order to advance her political career. The idea of her trying to channel Martin Luther King Jr. while uh, she has supported policies, <coughs> well, as regards uh, uh, foreign policy in Gaza, uh, her cynical attempts to say she supported a ceasefire for 30 days, allowing the claps and applause at her rallies before she said for 30 days because she is lock stock together with Israel. She is part of the G in Gaza. And, of course, she supports the war on China, which uh, Anthony Blinken is in the Philippines with Lloyd Austin, the Pentagon uh, Pentagon uh, Raytheon director, trying to make cash for when they lose the election, perhaps. Uh, Kamala Harris already said, though, that Blinken and... Uh, so the reports say Blinken won't be Secretary of State in a Kamala Harris presidency. He certainly won't be uh, if Trump uh, wins it. Filipino counterparts Enrique Manalo, Gilberto Teodora, they will be threatened by Blinken and Lloyd Austin to support U.S. policy in the South China Sea. Uh, let's hope they can survive uh, what threats uh, against them uh, for for. Uh, daring, if they choose to, daring to defy U.S. foreign policy. What the Philippines must realize is if they continue the way they are, they will be a real flashpoint for disaster in the U.S. war on China. Mm-hmm. Well, so Kamala Harris, then a bit of a comedian, you suggest. I'm sure she wouldn't wouldn't put your analyses uh, quite how you did no it. Chameleon, no chameleon, Kamala Harris, always <laughs> consistently <laughs> racist, is what her accusers say. Okay. Okay. Uh, and as to Blinken, you say he's in the, the Philippines after his quad foreign ministers meeting. Uh, but Australian foreign minister Penny Wong, who was also at the, the quad, the quad gang uh, meeting, she's in South Korea on Tuesday, uh, speaking with her counterpart, uh, Cho Tae Yol. And that's a day after she's, she's met with Blinken. Uh, as I said, uh, Blinken, who recently was in Seoul, 
Uh, now, this Penny Wong, she recently issued sanctions to North Korea after it sent arms to Russia, which it called illegal. Uh, and as we know, North Korea thinks South Korea and the US want to provoke a nuclear war. So no, what France, is she doing in South Korea? Thinks, France thinks South Korea is North Korea. Yeah, as <laughs> per the Olympics. <laughs> the wonderful Olympic ceremony. People think that it was Leonardo da Vinci's Last Supper. Of course, it was Bruegel's painting of Dionysus. So the detractors say, I think more interesting... Then the fireworks over Gaza and the EU, UK, US back to G in Gaza that continues all this week. And whether by Tuesday there will be war, wider war in West Asia, is the Delta Aquarid meteor shower. Oh. Which is on then. Exciting. So that, that'll be good. That'll be interesting. <laughs> and Independence Day of Vanuatu from the UK and France Day. I mean, seriously, is Vanuatu a country? Vanuatu just does whatever the US does and says. All this part of this war on China, and uh, it's clear China and Russia are getting closer and closer every day. There's a new statement from uh, the um, from Beijing and from Moscow showing they're willing to fight for a change. Mm -hmm. I think we we also need to keep a list of all the proclaimed countries that you say aren't countries. We need to we need a tally so so people can know what's a country and what's yeah. not. Um, also in Tehran, the new Iranian president, uh, Masoud Pezeshkian, uh, is being sworn in. I know there was a ceremony on Sunday, uh, but he's got an uh, official inauguration ceremony on Tuesday where he's going to take the oath. He's been saying in the last day or two that he wants constructive engagement with the West and wants a friendly approach to all countries except Israel. What do you make of this? Is Iran going to be able to close in their ties with the US and the UK and all these countries maybe actually, you know, develop a close relationship because of this new president. Could could friendliness be on the cards here? I know what the people of the southern suburbs of Tehran will uh, regard as constructive engagement with those countries arming the G in Gaza. Uh, their constructive engagement is people are fed up with uh, Iran not backing the uh, children of Gaza more and doing more to stop the what's happening in Gaza and in Jerusalem. So uh, if Pazeshkin thinks that uh, constructive engagement means talking to those arming uh, the uh, people dismembering the bodies of babies in Gaza, do you see I said dismembering rather than the other word? I'm now realizing the algorithm. I've got the, the I'm contacting um, Contacting Meta about it. I've got different words now. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Iran closer and closer to Russia and to China. You know, we have a we have a block. Uh, Gramsci, of course, the man who said political block. We have a real block forming now against uh, NATO nation foreign policy to prevent any Trump presidency declaring war on Iran, uh, let alone the continuation of this catastrophic Biden presidency under Kamala uh, Harris, arguably. Okay. Uh, obviously, some would say diplomacy is the best chance at peace and actually, you know, talking to and engaging with people who are doing things you don't like, uh, conversations to be had. Um, also well, Spanish that, that's illegal, of course, in Kiev, because Zelensky signed a law. Well, although it's illegal to negotiate with Russia. Well, although even Zelensky is now saying he's open to, to peace talks with easy. Russia in a few months. So, you know, maybe that is, is the only way forward. Um, Spanish Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez uh, is testifying against his wife in a Spanish court on Tuesday. We kind of mentioned this case briefly a couple of weeks ago. Basically, his wife, Begonia Gomez, is accused of corruption by using her position as the Prime Minister's wife to secure sponsors for a university master's degree course that she ran. She denies it. There's a now going on here. Sorry, oh, interrupt your Spanish. I can't, I don't hear, know what I can't hear anything, but that's if you good, can, that's, that's what it is. Um, now, Sanchez has, he has to testify as a witness against his wife, although he claims this is part of a, a smear campaign and it almost led to his resignation back in April. Although we haven't heard much of this case around the world, have we, in the media? So I don't really know why that is. Uh <laughs> Spain is just another. I mean, Spain's had it historically was, of course, F. Can I not use the word F? Uh, 
What's the word? People, we need a glossary know, or index. People will know the war in, in the 1930s, who the Republicans were fighting in Spain against the US UK backed F person. Okay. General Franco. But who was a, anyway? Uh, so the um, you know this Spain is now a colony again of the United States again. No, it used to be it used to have colonies in the United States. It clearly is uh, uh, part of that as regards foreign policy and the war in Europe. But I did enjoy the Olympic ceremony in Paris with the shock of watching the shock on the faces of the Spanish royal family, long associated with Franco. Uh, on watching the uh, beautifully created, um, recreated images of Marie Antoinette. Uh, you could see the blood oh, wow. in the veins of the neck and Marie Antoinette carrying her head. And then it cut away to the Spanish royal family. Clearly still, still not comfortable with the 1789 French Revolution. Did you not think? Yeah, very odd. Very so, odd. Very <laughs> 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 what was that about? I thought that was excellent. I mean, I could have done with great pictures of Saint Just and Robespierre, but um, they opted for uh, Dionysus, obviously. Okay, um, we'd better move to Wednesday. Absolutely, you ready? Wednesday, thirty-first of July. Uh, now, the UNESCO World Heritage Committee in New Delhi is adop uh, adopting its decision on new world heritage sites for this year and what heritage sites they deem to be in danger. This has been ongoing for a few weeks, actually. I don't think we've mentioned it. It happens annually. There are currently 1,199 world heritage sites. Worldwide. Bombed by NATO. Sorry, did I interrupt? What, by NATO? Bombed by NATO. 1,000 how many? 1,199. How many have been bombed by NATO or NATO weaponry? Because Not obviously, most of them, surely. Well, you, you mean you haven't got the list? If you I couldn't mean, say it, we've got to provide it. Britain and the United States and France were bombing UNESCO sites. In Lebanon, their armaments have been bombing UNESCO sites. In how many UNESCO sites have been bombed by NATO countries? Obviously, uh, they've bombed so much in Iraq, in Libya. Where, what was the old name for Libya? The priceless archaeology of Libya. And so many of the UNESCO sites bombed by, um, well, well, we'll go on to the share price of BAE systems later. Oh, well, I don't know how many that were listed as in danger, because I think they're likely to add Stonehenge to the list of World Heritage Sites in danger because they're planning to build like a, a yes. underground road underneath it. That's why it's in danger. Stonehenge, which for our international audience is that kind of historical rocky feature in England that we did mention a few weeks ago. People rocky like feature. I think it was designed. Are you saying it was natural? The, the, well, the rocky structure that people don't know how it was built, and that's the beauty of it. It's why is there a, why did, hundreds of years. Why did Britain allow a McDonald's? Have you been to Stonehenge in Salisbury? Not I far. Haven't. No. You've never been? No. Well, it's now by an <laughs> underpass, and there's a McDonald's beside it. And, of course, Salisbury, near uh, from Stonehenge, where the Druids uh, still go on Midsummer's Night to see the sun go through the two two stones, is near um, a uh, British Army training ground where they train uh, soldiers to go and fight for Zelensky against Russia, and Porton Down Chemical Warfare Lab, rumoured to have been the source of uh, the poisoning of the Skripals, then blamed on Russia. This is all Salisbury um, uh, happenings near Stonehenge. So it's a very strange and eerie place uh, from where the world's chemical weapons, from where the world's uh, wars uh, fought by British troops and covert forces. 43 killed in Odessa, killed or wounded in Odessa, SAS and SBS. I'm, I'm really shocked about uh, those figures not being reported. You, you obviously not. Okay. Well, well, those Stonehenge revelations that you say probably won't be mentioned by the committee, but I'll just quickly add there are 27 contenders for new world heritage sites to go onto the onto the list this year, some which include the Badain Jaran Desert in China, the Central Axis of Beijing, the historic town of Jedi in Kenya, Nelson Mandela legacy sites in South Africa, and quite a few others around the world and in several different different countries. So we'll see what the decision is and Your hopefully apartment? understand. 
your apartment up for that? No, I don't think it's don't think it's uh, special enough. Oh, that's it's sad. <laughs> um, I that's know it thing. is sad. Maybe maybe next year. Do we even um, say subscribe? Wednesday, thirty first of July is Warriors Day in Malaysia, commemorating all those servicemen and women mass murdered in the Malayan emergency by Clement Attlee's 1945 Labour government to fund the National Health Service universal health care system in Britain, so some detractors say, because uh, one of the first acts was to continue uh, mass slaughter in uh, what was um, what is now Malaysia, uh, the British Labour government. And uh, from there, they got huge revenues from rubber and so on. And that money was uh, helped to use for universal health care in Britain, so some argue but definitely there was a terrible uh, g word in uh, malaysia and uh, warriors day is commemorated on on uh, the 31st of july in malaysia okay very good and also prime minister georgia maloney italy's prime minister shall i say uh, is wrapping up her visit to china on wednesday she's been there since sunday uh, she's already met with Premier Li Kuang and vowed to relaunch ties with Beijing, and they just signed a three-year plan to strengthen economic cooperation between China and Italy. And this is a year after she removed Italy from China's Belt and Road Initiative. She said it brought no benefits to her country, uh, but she wants to increase cooperation. Why is she doing this now? Is rhetoric against China uh, by the likes of the US and the UK? Uh, has really ramped up and after the Quad Foreign Ministers gang uh, have met this week and, and spoken out against China. Why is she kind of going against the grain? And why, does, why does China trust her, given Maloney's clear uh, servile status in the face of Washington? Italy is not... It's, things are not good in Italy, are they? Clearly. Uh, a lot will depend on the tourism, but... If you look at all the economic statistics from, coming from Italy, it's uh, tying itself to Washington hegemonic power. Not a good situation. Uh, yeah, well, for... well, perhaps so even weirder, I think Wednesday's the day Anthony Blinken is going to be in Singapore as part of his Asia trip. He's going to meet with Prime Minister Lawrence Wong, along with the senior minister and foreign minister. Singapore, which is an ally of, of China, China, no. which the US seems to... Singapore is sort of allied with China. Oh, Singapore is a US proxy place. Well, it's kind of a bit of both, isn't it? I mean, it's it, it kind of rejects... How many US soldiers are in Singapore? US ties, but, uh, but obviously Blinken as well has said in the last few days, or he's called out the provocative military drills by China against one of what he calls provocative military drills. So mm. is he kind I'm of going there to work on Singapore against China? You know uh, that uh, Singapore has Changi Naval Base operated by the U.S. Navy. Singapore is a complete client uh, state of Washington. It has no autonomy, and if it ever threatened, uh, U.S. interests would be attacked by the United States. It, uh, it's difficult, isn't it, because there's lots of huge Chinese population in Singapore. It's going to be uh, difficult. Mm. Uh, for Singapore in the future as the war on China by either uh, a Trump or Harris uh, administration goes up. So Singapore has, um, what is the largest U.S. military base in Southeast Asia? It will be under attack from China in any uh, response uh, from uh, uh, the People's Republic to any violence committed by the United States. Uh, not sensible, really. Well, I suppose it? they're in a they're in a bit of a tricky situation then, kind of between China and the US. So uh, they've got to make a choice. Then that, that they, have to make, they have to make a choice, and uh, I'm sure Giorgio Meloni will be uh, uh, hearing that too. You know, the kind of thing I'm talking about. Uh, I learned from uh, Gore Vidal, who was uh, who died in 2012 on Wednesday, the 31st of uh, on on the 31st of July. Uh, he's still mourned by people all around the world on the Americas greatest uh, writers, historians of the United States. I, I remember him very well, interviewed him many times. Still sad about that. If Corvidal was alive, I think uh, he'd be organizing a demonstration against the Brookings Institution mm. on Wednesday, the 31st of July at 11 in the morning when, uh, who's Penny Pritzker? Penny Pritzker. I was about to mention that. So that go go for it. Who's Penny Pritzker? Penny Pritzker, yes. Who is she indeed? The U.S. Special Representative for Ukraine's 
economic recovery. <laughs> so she's hosting this discussion on the ec- economic future of Ukraine in Massachusetts. But I don't really know what business it is of the United States, uh, which is a complete in a completely different continent to Ukraine, and why they should care about Ukraine's economic recovery. It, a country that's already given billions of dollars to Ukraine anyway. So if anything, the US should be having a, a economic recovery plan, not Ukraine. Um, so why why is she addressing this US Institute for Government Research on? Who is she, Millie? I've got her Wikipedia page up here. She was uh, involved with the family business empire, the Pritzkers, Pritzker Partners, Pritzker Capital, Pritzker Realty Group, co-founder of Artemis Real Estate Partners, chair, board of Microsoft, chair of Carnegie Endowment for International Peace, or the G word, <laughs> estimated worth $3.2 billion, one of the most, uh, 100 most powerful women in the world. That is Penny Pritzker organizing uh, those with the N patch on their sleeves in uh, in Ukraine as the war rages on, as tens of thousands of uh, of Ukrainian troops are killed by Russia in the heart of Europe as the war continues with silence, radio silence from NATO nation media backing it, wanting the United States to take it over. The fact that Pritzker, uh, since September 2023, is there. As, and, and at the same time, is on the board of the Chicago Board of Education, the Museum of Contemporary Art, Chicago. Look at these rich people and how they are dominating policy for their own purposes. And uh, if you look up Penny Pritzker, yeah. you'll see, in a sense, the death of U.S. empire in her biography, because people like that, arguably, are never going to uh, uh, enhance the United States' power around the world. Uh, the friendship with the uh, with Barack Obama dates from the 1990s. Look up Pritzker and comment uh, if you have any more on Penny Pritzker and what right she has for this. Although she was good on Cuba. That's about it. Okay. Well, probably not going to be mentioned at the Brookings Institution, all of that. But, yeah, if, if, you are, if you're there at the discussion, let, let us know how it goes. Yeah. Any more information? 1775 Massachusetts Avenue. Get down there, 11 in the morning on Wednesday. Donald Trump, though, first time he's going to be in Pennsylvania for an outdoor rally or an indoor rally at New Holland Arena since Pennsylvania uh, let him down, arguably. (laughs) Uh, Certainly security did, uh, and someone tried to kill him. Yeah, well, hopefully hopefully he's okay. A lot of rallies this week as well. Kamala Harris out on rallies, J.D. Vance, Trump. um, You like J.D. Vance. You like J.D. Fun, yeah. the hillbilly, don't you? You're really a big fan of this man. Who I said, uh, comment. Yeah, 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 exactly. Who said what? Women who don't have children are cat women. Do you have a cat, Millie? Well, as he said, it was a sarcastic comment. Uh, <laughs> everything can be, in, be excused when humour is involved. Trump casts his opponent as far-left threat. That's in the Schultz burger. So in Pennsylvania on Wednesday, he'll be saying... That Kamala Harris, this right-wing extremist neocon who has supported G in Gaza, who has supported the war with the ends in Ukraine, somehow Kamala Harris is on the left. What are they talking about? They're confusing left-wing with identity politics left and yeah. cultural ideas. And uh, Adidas is uh, reporting results on Wednesday, July 31st. Do you see all the stuff about Gigi Hadid? Adidas, uh, clearly a, a G-supporting Gaza war uh, accessory. Boeing results on uh, Wednesday, July the 31st. Boeing, we saw the bomb and all the heads in Gaza at Nusrat refugee camp the other day. That's what Boeing does. Results. You won't see Boeing that. Boeing currently one. doing a, a plea deal as well, which we've mentioned in, in previous episodes. Oh, civil, those out. Civilian airliners. But mm-hmm. Boeing's bombs are dropping on children in Gaza. Uh, Meta, the company that owns Facebook, which is censoring ruthlessly uh, all posts that tell the truth about what's happening in Gaza, what's happening in Ukraine, what's happening in Venezuela, what's happening in Niger, they report results. Um, uh, Lufthansa, GSK, great medicine company, eBay, 
MasterCard involved in uh, trying to censor uh, different companies so that uh, if you say certain things, you can't use MasterCard. Uh, how brilliant that uh, the 31st of July is the anniversary in 1703 of Daniel Defoe, the great uh, English writer and political satirist, being um, placed in a pillory for the crime of seditious libel. Today, NATO arguably murders journalists who it doesn't agree with. Okay. Hopefully we're not two of them. Um, I love America. Thursday? Subscribe Thursday. Oh, no, we, we, do you have more on 31st? No, I'm done if you are. Giuliani bankruptcy pr proceeding. Oh, yeah, who cares? No one cares. You, know, I didn't, you didn't believe him. I didn't believe him when I was interviewing Giuliani and he had a laptop from Hunter Biden and we thought he was talking rubbish and he wasn't talking rubbish. The mayor of New York, former mayor of New York, Giuliani, should be given some sort of medal for exposing how Joe Biden's son was involved in in Ukraine. Anyway. I don't uh, think we didn't believe him. I think it just hadn't come out yet, so it would have been a... He had the laptop, and we still didn't believe him. Yeah. Because it sounded mad, because he was showing pictures <laughs> of Joe Biden, some with prostitutes smoking crack, and we didn't believe it. Yeah. Anyway. anyway, Thursday, which is the 1st of August, subscribe. Start of, subscribe. We've got through another month of life. If you make it to Thursday, keep going and hang in there if, you, if, if you're still... If you're still going, it's the it's US. Not bad. We make it sound pretty bad, I fear. Maybe it's not as bad as what we've never been bad. Venezuela, for heaven's sake. <laughs> well, keep going anyway. Happy first day of the month if you get to Thursday. It's the US Democratic Party's uh, virtual roll call to uh, nominate Kamala Harris, or it's meant yeah, to be anyway. Good. Uh, just a couple of weeks before the Democrat convention on the 19th of August. I think the final vote is expected before the 7th. Uh, but as we said earlier, pretty clear on who that's going to be. Uh, significant, though, that it's virtual. It's usually done in person, although in 2020 it was virtual because of the pandemic. But I think the decision to make it virtual now is quite controversial, isn't it? People aren't really sure why it's a virtual roll call and not in person, but that's going to start on Thursday anyway. Uh, Lebanon Armed Forces Day on Thursday, August the 1st. Will that be the day that uh, Lebanon's armed forces finally get it together and try and defend the people of Gaza, retake uh, all the occupied territory from Israel under UN Security Council uh, mandate authorization and uh, fight the good fight to save Gaza? It's really risky. Because uh, Britain, the European Union, and the United States are pouring weaponry and thousand pound bombs into Israel to use on civilian populations in West Asia. It's very tricky for the armed forces of Lebanon. I think a lot of the world will be hoping the spirit of the um, Warsaw Uprising 80 years ago on August the 1st is within Lebanese resistance, is within those in Gaza trying to resist uh, under the occupation, which is redolent of those uh, in um, Zelensky's forces with the N patches. Uh, of course, the Warsaw Uprising, one of the bravest uh, Polish resistance attempts to uh, take the city back from German occupation. Well, you, you mentioned that, though, can't be confused with the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising of 1943. Oh, yeah. It's different uh, sure. to... To, to this, but yeah, 80 years since the 1944 Warsaw Uprising. Uh, and as regards Lebanon, obviously we hope we hope for diplomacy. You know, no one wants uh, a wider war, an all-out war, so we can only hope... Although the United Nations resolutions do mandate that those under occupation have the right and duty to resist by armed means under the United Nations law. Well, regardless, we I think, you know, everyone hopes that doesn't happen even Lebanese officials, Israeli officials. I think you saying that agree that they don't want it to happen. Are you saying that resistance mandated under international law shouldn't happen? Well, I think that there's quite specific... You seem very close to doing that, Millie. It's, it's quite specific. Their duty on, is to resist illegal occupation. I think it's specific on what that particular uh, convention says, if, if you have a look. I'll tell, I'll it, tell you who it, resists. I'm sure you would agree, Afshin. People want peace. Uh, if diplomacy is the way to do that, we, we just want... Well, no, it's armed resistance under the mandate of the UN Charter. 
I'll tell you who did resist, Cambodia, Laos, and Vietnam, and it's Victory Day on August the 1st against the United States, Mass G, as six million maybe were murdered by American uh, soldiers in um, Cambodia, Laos, and uh, Vietnam. And 1927, the Nanchang Uprising on August the 1st, first significant battle for, uh, between um, Mao or the Communist Party of China and the uh, appalling Kuomintang, who would then be expelled into Taiwan. Yeah, and something that may stop all wars, uh, who knows? The EU Artificial Intelligence Act is coming into force on Thursday, 1st of August. Finally, we mentioned this a few months back, so check out what our old episodes. Uh, this is pitched as the world's first comprehensive set of rules or regulations for AI, though they mostly won't apply until 2026. But a ban on AI systems that pose an unacceptable risk will come into force on February the 2nd, 2025. I wonder what they'll deem as an unacceptable risk, possibly anything made by China or Russia or any uh, Wait a minute. countries will count as... What is the EU talking about? The Artificial Intelligence Act. BAE Systems releases results on that day. Isn't the whole point that the European companies are using artificial intelligence for autonomous dro killer drones, whether in the sky or under sea or on land? And all these arms companies on the same day, BA Systems, Rolls-Royce, arms company, Apple involved in arms and weaponry, Intel, chips are used in uh, NATO forces, um, Shell, oil, certainly fuel that is used in all these uh, NATO weaponry. I mean, they're, they're all publishing results and they're intricately part of the AI future envisaged by the military industrial complex in NATO nations. I'm not sure what they're what they're even talking about. How apt, though, that while the Paris Olympics goes on, in 1936, on August the 1st, Adolf Hitler opened the Olympic Games in Berlin. Arguably, that's the kind of Olympics they're having in Paris today, with Russia banned for fighting those with the N-word in Ukraine, while Ukraine are allowed. Yeah, you do mention that, though, because Olympics is is known for banning countries. I think it's happened, you know, since the Olympics began. It, it previously banned South Africa. It's previously banned Germany, uh, in fact. Since the Olympics... Kind of anyone against... Pardon? Ancient Greece. Oh, it's, it's certainly since, okay, the, the last several <laughs> years, it's, uh, it's not shied away from banning countries that, uh, you know, it's against it's Washington. I'm friendly with. Against Washington policy. The Olympics are a Washington... NATO uh, attempt at uh, using sport as a political weapon. Yeah. So if you notice, there's no way the United States has ever been banned, despite what it did in Iraq, Libya, Afghanistan, Syria. Uh, who, who, why, why is the United States allowed to compete at the Olympics under the US flag and the US banner? How is Britain allowed, given its illegal invasion of Iraq? Why, sure. why? Although, although South Africa was, was banned and you... You know, uh, because of the apartheid regime, which you, you know, you, you champion Nelson Mandela, who fought against apartheid. So would you agree South Africa should have not been banned from the Olympics? But of course, Isn't it is that, a very political that thing. That was when remember. the United States and Britain started to uh, support uh, the anti-apartheid struggle because they saw it was over because they didn't need to support apartheid anymore because the Berlin Wall had come down, arguably. Is that not the... Not yeah. the point. Swiss natural, yeah. National Day on the EU Unemployment Statistics Day. Switzerland, a complete proxy now of the United States. It's lost its neutrality. Anyone got a Swiss Army pen knife? Throw it away, I would argue. Well, <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Switzerland. Great advice there. Um, oh, can I use the N word? Guilty over January 6th sentencing at the district court in, uh, in Washington. Richard Zachary Ackerman sentenced after being found guilty uh, participation in the January 6th riots. I'm surprised uh, they're against him at this district court in the United States. He's got a hearing at 2 p.m. on Thursday, August the 1st, because the United States is supporting the neo-N National Socialist Club people in Kiev. Surely he should be sent to Kiev with his buddy uh, Zelensky, this man, rather than being sentenced to prison for... Um, you turning the um, Hindu 
sign the other way. Can you see how I have to talk now? Because they're social media, so <laughs> yeah. I don't get banned. Yeah. Obviously, they, they'd say that that's not what they're porting, and they would deny the presence of such peoples. Um, well, who would deny war? The US would deny, and Ukraine would deny. Anyway. What? Uh, there are huge flags. I'm not talking in your riddles. I've got photographs of the symbol on Zelensky's friends' tunics and Okay. Stuff. Elsewhere on Thursday, OPEC Plus is meeting for a virtual joint ministerial monitoring committee session on Thursday, just a few days after Russia, Kazakhstan and Iraq, I believe, announced big oil cuts to reduce their oil production by a total of over 2 million barrels per day from now until September 2025 in a bid to balance the global oil market. Don't know who this is going to impact, I'm sure. I don't know, the US isn't happy. Europe maybe will, will suffer from this. Remains to be seen. We'll see. <laughs> you don't care about the Bulgaria IPCC summit continuing. You're up for the oil. Well, I was going to mention well, I mean, that on the Friday when it finishes. So shall we the Friday? Go fast. Okay, you can. Go okay. forward. Friday 2nd of August then. The IPCC. Right. <laughs> Subscribe. Uh, yeah, we did mention this. Uh, last week, didn't we, Afshan? I think it started on Saturday. This is the 61st session of the IPCC hosted by Bulgaria, uh, which is finishing on Friday. That's the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. No one cares. NATO countries are all behind it, are funding the wars in Gaza, in the heart of Europe, in Ukraine. They want a revolution against Maduro. They're trying to sponsor disaster in West Africa. They don't care about the environment. Why is the US Navy being sent to the South China Sea? and to the uh, Arabian Sea. There is that. But then, interestingly, I mean, obviously, well, we do see climate in, in the news a lot. And when it suits, it will certainly be you know, important, and it is. But I think uh, at this session, a decision is going to be made on the timeline for its next cycle of reports over the rest of the decade. Uh, but apparently there's some political struggle which has been ongoing over the final wording of IPCC reports, which I think is a little alarming because that suggests that any results it, it provides on the climate, findings, conclusions, uh, the sentiment is like kind of being tampered with, either played up or played down, whereas you think just giving the facts as they see them is what they would need to write. But if there's political disagreement on how they word things, that's potentially a bit worrying. I don't know how, how much we can trust the IPCC. Uh, it's not the IPCC. Know. It's the U.S. military, the largest military on Earth, who are refusing to talk about the emissions that they make, thus skewing all the emission numbers. And the IPCC doesn't even look at U.S. military emissions. How, uh, how wonderful. For Chevron, Exxon, uh, Volkswagen, and Conoco. That's the name of the area in uh, Syria occupied illegally by U.S. troops. All results on Friday, uh, the um, 2nd of uh, August. And how brilliant it is that on this day in which the, all those oil companies associated with so many human rights abuses, Chevron denies uh, human rights abuses, Exxon denies human rights abuses, Conoco denies human rights abuses, all of them settling out of court suits many times. Shell was the previous day infamous for their actions in uh, the Niger Delta. How brilliant that uh, all of that's happening on um, Roma Holocaust Day. That's uh, the gypsies. Uh, I, uh, that must be a long time ago. Roma Holocaust Memorial Day. Oh. Yeah, that is on the second. Uh, but I think, for me, August the 2nd, and you said Maloney was in China this week, is important because it's the anniversary of the Bologna train station bombing in 1980, where now we're getting papers about Operation Gladio uh, and how the CIA and NATO were involved in these far-right groups that blew up train stations in Italy, uh, were responsible for infiltrating so-called left-wing groups in Europe to destroy the communist parties of Europe after 1945 as the, United, as the war ended. And uh, we still don't have the full information about that horrific, more than 200 were wounded, let alone 85 killed, in the Bologna train station bombing. And the files are still classified on what the CIA was doing. Who knows how long it'll take for the CIA files to be released about what's happening today 
as regards their funding for violence, uh, the Americans, uh, NATO countries, uh, funding for violence. Paratroopers Day in Russia, at least there were Russian paratroopers uh, all these years who have tried to uh, stop uh, those with the N-word uh, around, uh, around the world. Potsdam Conference on August the 2nd finished when uh, Stalin, Churchill, Clement Attlee and uh, Harry Truman met in uh, in Potsdam, uh, just just near Berlin, to uh, talk about the war and the administration of Germany. Germany now in deep economic trouble. Surprisingly, you mentioned uh, Russia Paratroopers Day. Another Russia Day. We just had their Russia Navy Day on Sunday. As I say, Russia's always got a, a special day, particularly when it comes to, to the military. Um, I'll just quickly add Friday, 240 years to the day since uh, the US signed the Declaration of Independence from Britain. And it kind of shows uh, the tough business uh, of, of a country becoming independent. Obviously, it's celebrated on the 4th of July, but actually was signed uh, on the 2nd of August, uh, 1776. But the actual act of signing uh, this document, which was signed by 56 uh, men, it wasn't pretty. I think five were captured and tortured by the British as a result of this. Nine died in war. Many others had their homes pillaged and burnt uh, just for the act of, of trying to become independent. So it just kind of shows <laughs> it's tough trying to become You really sympathize with these slave-owning uh, U.S. Uh, uh, independence activists, don't you? Well, that's not true. Um but uh, interesting when you when you look into the history. Uh, James Baldwin was born on uh, August the uh, August the second. James Baldwin, read his books, read his poetry, read about what he says about American independence and what the United States has done for human rights since independence. He died in 1987, sadly, and the kind of human rights abuses, arguably, of the United States will be on show at the Employment Situation, U.S. statistical release, faking employment, unemployment statistics. So we hear from some economists, the U.S. Labor Department, U.S. officials are lying about employment because people are having to do two jobs, three jobs. People are two paychecks from bankruptcy in the United States. It's a poor country, a desperately, desperately poor country, the United States. If it had remained part of Britain under King Charles III, today it would be a rich country, right, Millie? Right, if you say so. Uh, shall we just quickly finish on the weekend then? Saturday the 3rd. It normally finishes on the weekend. That's how you finish. <laughs> just for some people who may not know. That oh, yeah, some, really some countries, as you said, start the week differently. Exactly, exactly. Uh, okay, then Saturday, 3rd of August, uh, more marches for, for Palestine, as there often is on, on Saturday. Are you allowed to say in London. You're not allowed to say Palestine, are I think, you? I think we're... New regulations now. You're not allowed to say Palestine, not allowed to say Gaza, not allowed to say... I, d I don't think that's, that's true. Um, <laughs> <laughs> take it over far, but more marches... As usual, a protest in London calling for a ceasefire in Gaza. There will be many around the world. It seems not much came of Netanyahu's visit to the US Congress and to the White House last week. Uh, was there as we as we spoke about on last week's episode? We thought maybe maybe something would happen, but nothing really other than a yeah, standing ovation in Congress. Afraid people in Washington protesting what's happening in Gaza and US UK EU involvement in Gaza. Uh, mass demonstrations not really covered properly in the NATO propaganda media. So, uh, yeah, I mean, there was, there was a lot of violence, wasn't there? A lot of stuff going on. The police were pretty heavy handed. And there will be said. again, as you said, on the uh, uh, August the 3rd, 12 o'clock, uh, the London one kicks off, or there'll be ones in Paris, in Madrid. Uh, not that any of these um, democratically elected leaders. They're not really democratically elected leaders in Western Europe. They're incredibly unpopular. Uh, Keir, Keir Starmer only just been elected. Only 34% of people wanted him to be prime minister, but somehow he's prime minister. They're not democratic countries. Their media is censored, but the people are out on the streets trying desperately to convince their governments to stop funding the G in, uh, in Gaza. That's right. Um, that's pretty much going to be 
taking up most of the news, I think, on Saturday. Sunday. Ray, you can't um, just skip that fast. Oh, no. You just have nothing for it. It's Venezuelan Flag Day when there will be a huge celebration for Nicola Maduro as the president of Venezuela, and what a success. I mean, it was narrow. When you think of the sanctions on Venezuela and the things that happened to him, Flag Day will be a great day in Caracas and across the country with the largest known oil reserves. And it's Independence Day of Niger on Saturday, crucial to not only MRI scanner uranium, nuclear weapons, uh, the um, this guy hated French-backed, NATO-backed uh, Mohamed Bazoum. Is he still in jail? Where, where is this 64-year-old uh, and his wife, Hadiza? They've been in detention now for a year. They stole money. They were back to the hill by the CIA, by the French secret services. They're in jail. But Abdul Rahman Tiani has been on TV every other day explaining to the public of Niger now is the time for Niger's people to throw off the yoke of French colonialism, the appalling ways that the Niger currency has been manipulated by Paris. It's a great day, uh, Independence Day, celebrating Niger's independence in 1960 for France because it's really independent today. Well, happy Independence Day to Venezuela and congratulations. No, no, it's Flag Day for Venezuela. Something oh. to do with the flag. Independence Day for Niger and Black Hat USA. I don't know whether you'll be going to. Uh, Las Vegas, the Mandalay Bay Convention Center, big hacking, hacking conference. Well, hacking on behalf of the authorities conference, Black Hat USA. Uh, Kicks off on August the 3rd. Let us know then if, if you're heading down there uh, to anyone watching. Are you ready for Sunday? <laughs> no one watching right now, is it? <laughs> anyway, if anyone. Sunday August, <laughs> Sunday, August the 4th. Sunday, August the 4th. Uh, Sunday, for me, as president. Barack Obama is turning 63 on Sunday, but it's 63. All... I mean, how many people in Libya are not turning 63 because of the butcher of Libya killed so many and destroyed Africa's richest per capita country? Why is Barack Obama not in prison? Okay, but anyone tell me why he's not in prison for the illegal invasion of Libya that destroyed that rich country? Okay, well, not only is he not in prison, but in the US on his birthday, it is actually considered. Barack Obama Day. So it's like a double day for, Ob for Obama. This day was created in, in 2018. And Illinois, where uh, Obama was a senator, they commemorate this day with celebrations, festivities, and it's even a state holiday. So happy birthday to Obama and, and happy I mean, birthday to Illinois. How many people did Obama uh, kill? He embraced the US drone program. Hundreds of drone strikes in the poorest countries in the world, Somalia, Yemen, Pakistan, uh, 10 times more drone strikes than under George W. Bush. You've got to remember how brutal Barack Obama was as a uh, leader in uh, the United States. Uh, he, uh, I mean, I suppose his only saving grace was he didn't go in uh, to Syria as the military industrial complex wanted him uh, to. But uh, no one will ever, ever forgive Barack Obama for what, what he did to so many poor countries, the mass murder of so many, including U.S. citizens via drone strikes. He's 63. So many others did not see their 10th birthday, 15th birthday. Uh, it's the anniversary of the second Gulf of Tonkin incident, 1964, August the 4th. What Gulf of Tonkin incidents by next week on August the 4th can we expect as regards West Asia, whether it be fake uh, news uh, about uh, supposed Hezbollah attacks on Arabs, which are obviously nonsense. There'll be fake news attacks uh, applauded in Hollywood of butcher type massacres in Ukraine. Gulf of Tonkin, um, fake news uh, types of attacks that the United States deliberately creates an event to try and start something like in Syria with the fake chemical weapons use continues to this day. Um, just quick history on that. Um, uh, subsequently, Naval Officer John White said, I maintain that the President Johnson, Secretary McNair, McNamara, Joint Chiefs of Staff gave false information to Congress in their report about the Gulf of Tonkin. False flag attacks. How ironic it's the same day that champagne was reputedly invented by Don Perignon. Okay, very interesting. You don't care about that one, 1693. Interesting. Uh, I think we'd better leave it there if, if you, unless you have anything else you'd like to add. 
for Sunday? I think, you know, all this war talk in Japan and Blinken's uh, touring there, in 1975 on August the 4th, the Japanese Red Army took more than 50 hostages in Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. Uh, the U.S. consul was there, the Swedish charge d'affaires, the gunmen win the release of five imprisoned comrades and fly them to Libya, then under Gaddafi. I think a lot of people in Southeast Asia will be looking at Blinken and uh, Raytheon, Lloyd Austin with cancer, wandering around, telling these countries what to do and thinking their populations, just look at the population of Japan suffering a recession. They want change. The world is changing. And uh, as Nicola Maduro showed at the beginning of the week, change will continue. Okay. Well, on that note, I think we better leave it there. Uh, and that's going to be our last show for, for a few weeks. Where are you going, Millie? I think I might go to Capri or somewhere, you know, like the G7. I feel like I just want to go wherever they've been. Who is it? Maybe I'll give myself a formal dinner. I'm an informal one and see which I prefer. I think you've been a bit cruel to Maloney on Forecast News, but, uh, yeah, go to Italy if you want. (gasps) I I think uh, you should go and support the Syrian tourism industry. Visit Damascus and Palmyra or Libya. Who knows? I mean, we talk about so many great places on Forecast News. It just kind of gives you the itch to to go to all Travel. those places. Exactly, if you've got the money. Subscribe. Subscribe. Uh, <laughs> please uh, leave a I comment. I might be back. I might be back next week because I don't have the money to go abroad. Okay, well, <laughs> please uh, do leave, leave a comment uh, on what we've discussed and also take the opportunity to look back at any old episodes uh, to date, if you if you haven't, and uh, we look forward to to bringing you more. But uh, for now, we better go. Any any final words, Afshin? Let's hope uh, when you're back, we can resume forecast news in peace, and the wars will be over. That's all we can hope for, because uh, at the current rate, as we sign off this final edition of forecast news of uh, the, before we come back in the winter, it looks like Armageddon is not far away. Well, hopefully not, but uh, we'll come back to you in a few weeks. Take care and bye for now.